is what Ben is running. So it's the first time we're going to be seeing that on the stream today. And that is what Ben's decided to pilot. And Wolf going with a slightly different team. You know, he's got the options there with the, the, the Reggie Alecki, mm -hmm. the, the Whimsicott, and then his restricted pairing being the Shadow Rider Calyrex and the Zashian, which we have seen already on stream today. Well, this is the thing, you need to look at both the players and what their speed control options are going to be. You know, Wolf with the Whimsicott, we know it's very favorable for going for that Prankster priority Tailwind. Um, but then on the opposing side as well with Ben, you've got that Charizard and those max airstreams will be able to boost up the speed on Ben's side of the field as well. Wolf, of course, also has the speed option with that Reggie Alecki if it wants to go for any Electro Webs and slow down the speed on the opposing side. I'm not going to complain, we all know I'm a Reggie Alecki fan. Yeah, and you've got to think as well that, that, that Wolf has to be a, a little bit careful around the screens that Ben's got because mm -hmm. that is going to provide him a lot of support throughout this game and just really slow down the, the offensive output that, that uh, Wolf's got on his side of the field. Well, the leads are out here and for Wolf, you've got the Regieleki and the Incineroar and for Ben, the Sun is on the field with Groudon making an appearance paid up with that Grimmsnarl. So I wouldn't be surprised to see those screens going up, but you have to manage to get out of the way of that fake out from the Incineroar. Yeah, and that's one of the things that Ben's going to have to kind of consider here. You know, he can go for the screens, um, but the, the fake out from the Incineroar is active on Wolf's side of the field and it is an easy thing for Wolf to do to, to kind of remove those screens, at least mm -hmm. for one, or slow them down for one turn. But the, the Groudon's putting on so much pressure here. It is intimidated, so it's not going to be hitting as hard. But it is going to get a huge damage onto that Regieleki and good considerable damage onto that Incineroar as well, depending on if what item it's holding, you know, a common item on Incineroar, something like the Shucker Berry to reduce the damage there, mm -hmm. um, which may give Wolf a little bit more room to kind of move around in this first turn. Well, very early on in this game one, we are going to see a Dynamax Lee, and it's going to be the delightful Reggie Alecki. Very happy to be here in the European Championships. But a great situation here to apply a lot of offensive pressure down onto that opposing Grimmsnarl. Reggie Alecki not known to be a good counter to the Groudon, but potentially with the fake out from a Incineroar, that could stop the Groudon from moving this turn. It does, however, go down into that opposing Grimmsnarl, so no screens. Reggie Alecki going to go for that Max Lightning, going to be able to target down into the Grimmsnarl, do a huge chunk of damage and pick up the solid KO against it, and that will certainly give Wolf a sigh of relief that you're not going to have those screens reducing the offensive output that Wolf's Pokemon are going to be able to do while setting up that electric train on the field too. So if uh, Regieleki is able to move next turn, it's going to be able to deal a big, big hit, and Regieleki oh. avoids the Precipice Blades. The Incineral there is going to take its berry as well, reducing the attack, um, sorry, reducing the damage of that ground-type attack thanks to the Sugar Berry. So a phenomenal turn one here for Wolf. Yeah, and a, a really paying off dividends from here because he gets that fake out like we mentioned from the incineral mm -hmm. stopping the screen support from the grim snarl and then uh, surprisingly maxing the regieleki in front of a ground on which mm -hmm. you would think probably the last thing you'd see to, to max and then getting rid of the grim snarl removing those that screen support and unfortunately for ben missing that precipice blade onto the regieleki which is a bit unfortunate for him but wolf in a phenomenal position here Yes, yeah, certainly. And Reggie Alecki looking very happy again. You know, in its Dynamax form, doesn't have to worry about taking a fake out. It could go for an Max Lightning into something like the Incineroar. You do have to be a little bit cautious, though. Ben has the option, of course, of another ground type Pokemon. If the Gastrodon is that fourth Pokemon in the back, and having double ground on the field against Reggie Alecki will certainly put Reggie Alecki in a difficult spot, not going to be able to deal any damage. No, and, and the thing, I think that the, the Reggie Alecki doesn't feel as threatened as well because of that initial Intimidate that the Incineroar has got onto Ben's Groudon. So it isn't going to be hitting as hard and now you can see he's going to pivot the Incineroar out, keep it for later, keep that Intimidate in the back to bring in when a bit better opportunity, and now the, the Rillaboom going to hit the field. Yeah, I think that Intimidate on Wolf's side is certainly going to be useful going forward, like you said, just being able to preserve it and possibly throw some more Intimidates down to that ground and weaken it further, because it certainly applies a lot of pressure to his team. But Ben going for the Dynamax Incineroar again. Love to see this very powerful Pokemon on the field. You can see it's there ready to deal some destructive damage to this Rillaboom with something like a Max Flare, perhaps. But first of all, Regieleki going to go for that Max Lightning. No longer has the Electric Terrain, but still does a phenomenal chunk of damage oh. with a critical hit. Reggie Alecki is absolutely on fire here, doing so, so well with the big, big damage and gets that electric train back on the field. 
Groudon is going to go for the Precipice Blades. This time will find its mark on the Regieleki, but thanks to it being in its Dynamax and that Intimidate, going to be able to survive as Incineroar does go for the Max Flare. It is actually targeting down the Regieleki. Just wants to remove the damage hitter from the field. Yeah, that critical hit from the Regieleki Ooh. onto the Incineroar is really unfortunate once again for Ben. You know, he had that Precipice Blades miss the turn one mm -hmm. and then and then the critical hit there doing that huge amount of damage. You're not with the, the, the Electric Chain not present on the field either. So, you know, the, the Incineroar not in a great spot. It does get a little bit of a return for a knockout onto the Regieleki, but in range now, as we see the Zashin come in, a Sacred Sword can pick it up, and uh, the Rillaboom probably can do the same with something maybe like a high horsepower if it's got access to it. Well, that's the thing, Incineroar is sitting very vulnerable at the minute on only 28 hate points remaining. Um, you know, the Zashin can easily pick up a KO against it or can start trying to target down that Groudon. But again, Rillaboom with the Grass type um, is going to be able to apply pressure to Groudon as well. Something like a Wood Hammer would certainly deal a significant chunk of damage. And Wolf has the utility to be able to switch in the Incineroar from the back as well and apply that Intimidate to the Groudon on Ben, weakening it a little bit further. Yeah, and I, I think that's the, where the control is. If you switch the Rillaboom out at any point, you're going to be able to get that Grassy Train back and the, it kind of takes away the worry that you've got about that Groudon because you can just bring the Rillaboom back in and have access to Grassy Terrain, Grassy Glide, which is, you know, the priority attack and deal with it quite easily. Exactly, and Groudon not having a good time here. Manages to go for the Precipice Blades, but only finds its mark on the Rillaboom, avoiding the super effective damage it would have been able to get on that Zashin. The Woodhammer does come out from the Rillaboom, but instead just picks up the KO against that opposing Incineroar, just removing the Dynamax option from Ben going forward. Yeah, it's just a, a series of uh, unfortunate events, I think, mm -hmm. for Ben here. He's just had the, the Precipice Blades, the low accuracy attack. It's just not connecting, and Wolf managing the game very well. You know, he's not taking any... You know, you know he had that surprise max turn one, but he had a clear plan in mind and everything's went to plan. It's making it difficult for Ben to get the damage off and especially it's even harder when your, your moves are missing in the first place. Yeah, poor Groudon just not having a good time here. Um, and again, you know, Ben down to just the Zashin and the Groudon. Both are restricted out here on the field, but Groudon is certainly sitting that little bit more vulnerable. Isn't going to be able to deal too much of the Rillaboom, whereas in turn, Rillaboom is going to be able to pick up a KO against it. The Zashin, however, it's going to be interesting to see which Zashin is going to be faster at this point in time. Yeah, and I think going into to game two, especially for both players, it's probably useful information to know who's who's got the fastest Zashin, mm -hmm. um, if it is Wolves or if it is Ben's, and it can kind of dictate how you formulate a game plan going into the, the next set. Well, it looks like in this particular turn, Wolves is going to be going first, able to go for the Behemoth Blade down into that Groudon, which we know will be able to pick up the solid KO against it. And I like the, you know, the really simple switch there in getting the Intimidate down on both these physical attackers on Ben's side. As Zashin now at neutral damage is going to be going for a Behemoth Blade, all of its very own, finding its mark down onto the opposing Zashin. So good to kind of see the damage calculations on there. Could possibly be a two hit at that neutral. Some good information for Ben going into game two. Yeah, um, it, it, it's, pr it's pretty hard for Ben to kind of come back from this point, unfortunately. You can see he's getting good damage onto the Zashin on, on Wolf's side of the field, but as we do see, the forfeit come out there and Wolf taking an early lead in this round three set. I mean, Regieleki is the Pokemon that I think I'm going to remember from that game one in particular. It's such a pivotal Pokemon for Wolf, and I think you, you said it yourself, Lee, going for that Dynamax in front of a Groudon, and you know, for all we know, that Groudon could have gone for the Dynamax and gone for a Max Quake into the Regieleki, and even at minus one would have done some destructive damage. So, really brave call, and it paid off for Wolf. Yeah, and I think it, it just comes down to Wolf being able to kind of identify the, the biggest threat from in the matches. I mean, we highlighted it before coming in. You know, the screens are going to be something that give Bennett like that extra kind of little bit of an advantage. It makes it harder to get the damage that you want onto his side of the field if those screens are present. And identifying a way to, even if it meant sacrificing the Regieleki, but if you got rid of that Grimmsnarl, that's a good enough return for Wolf at that point because he is able to negate the screens and then kind of kind of go with his game plan from there. Uh, unfortunate for Ben, he had a couple of misses a bit. That The critical hit was huge because it meant then the next turn, the Incineroar didn't really get to utilize the Dynamax at all. We had two pretty, you know, Pokemon that you wouldn't have expected to see Dynamax in that match. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the thing. You wouldn't expect the Regieleki in the position that it was in. And um, Incineroar Dynamax is not something we see every day. So it was an absolute delight to see that. But going into game two, Ben is certainly going to have to make some adjustments and find a way to deal with that Regieleki a little earlier on. I mean, he's got two ground types on the team. There's certainly the options for it. Um, but I think in game one, possibly trying to prioritize getting that screen up just 
cost him a little bit in those early sort of turns of the game. And as for Wolf, he needs to be able to find a way to still pick up those very solid KOs with his Pokemon. Yeah, and I think the one thing that we really kind of identified in that game one is how influentially Intimidate is on that Groudon yes. uh, against Ben. You know, Wolf going to be able to utilize that um, whenever he wants if he's pivoting the Incineroar in and out. And I think Ben needs to be aware that if you're really wanting to utilize, go down that Groudon route, you're going to have to try and get the Groudon in unintimidated. So maybe switching it in turn one as a play, keeping it in the back mm -hmm. to bring in to avoid that initial Intimidate is a way to go. But we are going to see the exact same leads, Lou. Yes, it is an exact replica of game one with the Regilecki and the Incineroar coming up for Wolf, whereas Ben has gone for the Grimmsnarl and Groudon. But my question, Lee, is whether it's going to be the same turn of events or are we going to see some strong adjustments from either player? Well, I think the one thing that you would think is, has Ben brought maybe the Gastrodon in the mm. back? You know, you keep talking about this double ground type and it's so good against Regilecki with how dominating it was in that game one. Has Ben adjusted? And if you see a switch maybe from the Grimmsnarl, kind of scouting that, um, then the Gastrodon coming in, it's a wasted max move and then you can see that maybe the Groudon max this turn as well yes. and then go for that max quake try and start stacking up those special defense boosts with that max quake well it's going to be a dynamax regieleki once again not living in fear of the potential gastrodon switch it's certainly very happy to be here but i wonder if we're also going to see a dynamax from ben here with that Groudon potentially um it is indeed going to be a dynamax i mean it could be the grim at this paint but judging by the pokeball i'm going to make an educated guess that it's going to be that Groudon. and i think being able to go for something like the max quake here is a really good adjustment you can just target down against that regieleki yeah, and I think that's the big, the key here is go after the Regieleki. I mean, you can go after the Incineroar as well. You're probably not going to pick up the knockout onto it, but getting the damage onto that Regieleki and kind of punishing. Uh, if Wolf goes for the same play again and getting rid of the Grimson, at least you're getting some return with your Groudon here rather than getting nothing at all. Well, it's the same strategy here from Wolf Fake Out and the Max Lightning double up into that Grimmsnarl. will remove it from the field and, of course, set that electric terrain to boost up the Regieleki if it is able to survive the Max Quake. Of course, this Groudon is intimidated. That's certainly going to factor into the calculations here, uh, particularly with that little bit of a Life Orb chip. Here we go, the Groudon going down for that Max Quake, targeting down into Regieleki, and it is going to be able to pick up the KO against it. But, you know, Regieleki managed to pick a KO up of its own as well. And I think that was what we kind of outlining game one you know even if you lose Regilecki yeah. turn one as long as you get rid of the Grim Snow, get rid of that screen support then you kind of don't mind although now the Groudon you say that the Groudon for Ben is in a great position compared to game one it's got plus one special defense boost so it's going to take an attacks a lot better it's had no damage into it it is intimidated so it isn't going to be hitting as hard but everything on all side of the field at the moment is really threatened by that Max mm -hmm. Quake yeah, definitely. That's the thing. The Max Quake will do huge damage to both the Incineroar and that Zashin. Um, with the special defense boost, certainly if Wolf has got that Calyrex Shadow in the back, that can be really useful later on towards the end game of this match. Um, but unfortunately, with Incineroar and Zashin being the physical attackers, at the minute, it's not the most helpful of moves, other than its destruction against both these Pokemon that are weak to it. Yeah, and I think if, if, if you go back to game one, and if, if Wolf has brought the Rillaboom, it puts a bit more reliance on Ben, making sure that he keeps that Incineroar around for the late game because he's going to need it to really help out with the Rillaboom if it is in the back. Well, Sacred Sword doing a significant chunk to that opposing Incineroar as Max Quake finds its mark down on the Zashin, but able to survive on 25 hit points remaining. So Zashin looking to be, if it's not followed up by that Incineroar, could be able to deal some big damage in the next turn as well, as it is such a speedy Pokemon out on the field at the moment. Incineroar from Ben going to go for the Throat Chop into the Incineroar of Wolf here. Not very effective, gets a cheeky critical hit just for those extra little bits of points as Incineroar goes for the Burning Jealousy. Yeah, the Burning Jealousy going to come out now and burn that crowd on, which is really, you know, a great play from mm -hmm. Wolf, identifying that if he goes for the Max Quake, he gets the boost, we can punish that and burn this crowd on. Um, we, I only mentioned about the, the keeping the Incineroar for Ben, it's important because of the Rillaboom, because these special defense boosts here are going to be irrelevant mm -hmm. if it is the Rillaboom in the back, because it is a physical attacker, and that's all that Wolf has on his side of the field. Now, Zashian here is in a position where it can probably pick up a knockout onto Ben's Incineroar, um, at the cost of being taken down again to a max quake, but it does free up the Incineroar maybe on Wolf's side of the field to either switch out, get the Rillaboom in, and then have that Intimidate for later in the game. 
Well, you've said it, and it looks like that's what's happening here, Lee. Rillaboom is joining the battlefield, whereas Incineroar is hiding away to maybe intimidate later on when needed, particularly if you're trying to really pin down this Groudon on Ben's side. Uh, Grassy Terrain is going to be in effect with a little bit of recovery, but the Zashin going for the Sacred Sword, going to be able to pick up the KO against that Incineroar and remove that really good utility for Ben to deal with that Rillaboom that's now on the field. Groudon certainly going to be sitting very vulnerable. It does, however, go for that Max Flare, targeting down into the Zashin. Will easily be able to pick up the KO against it, but it would have been nice maybe to get that damage on the Rillaboom. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, getting the damage onto the Rillaboom, you're calling the switch there, so it's a big call there. And, and I, I think just getting rid of the, the Zash in is probably more beneficial because it is the fastest thing uh, on the, on both sides of the field and it is going to throw out big damage every time it does attack with either its Behemoth Blade or Sacred Sword. Well, both our players are down to their last two Ooh. remaining Pokemon. And we see an adjustment here from Ben with the Charizard in force. The sun is in the sky as well. This is certainly an environment that Charizard would love to be in. And it's certainly a Pokemon that Rillaboom would not like to have seen come out of the Pokeball. Now, if you wanted a partner for your Groudon <laughs> in this end game, if you're Ben, it is going to be that Charizard. You've got to worry about the fake out here from the Incineroar on Wolf's side of the field because it is going to be able to probably go into the Groudon if it is a Salt Vest on Ben's side of the field. So it's a pr pretty free turn, but do you risk not protecting your Charizard here and taking unnecessary damage when you don't ne necessarily need to? Yeah, I mean, there's no Dynamax or Gigantamax at this point. Um, it's going to be these Pokemon on the field for the rest of the game here. Um, but this Charizard certainly could be a nice comeback here for Ben. Fake Out is going to go into it, though, so it's not going to be able to move on this particular turn as Rillaboom goes for the Wood Hammer, targeting down that Groudon, picking up a solid damage against it in the grassy terrain as well. And even though it has, you know, got the burn and has had its attack st uh, stat dropped a couple of times, it's still a Pokemon you just want to get rid of. Easy KO with the Rillaboom, and now you just have to deal with this one Charizard. Yeah, and it does, uh, you know, that the Charizard that is a great matchup against the Rillaboom, but it doesn't have a great matchup against the Incineroar necessarily, unless it does have something like potentially Scorching Sands. If you're relying on Air Slash or Hurricane, it can get a little bit dicey there because those moves don't have that 100% accurate, um, you know, so it can be a little bit tricky, but we Ooh. see the Hurricane come out in the sun <laughs> and connect with the Incineroar. Yeah, I think Charizard making up for the misses of Groudon um, earlier in this set, able to find its mark. But the Flare Blitz also going to be boosted up by that sun going down into the opposing Charizard. So even though it's not, you know, super effective damage, every little bit's going to be stacking up here. Ben doesn't have any recovery options, particularly as well with Charizard being that flying type. It can't even get the grassy terrain. Yeah, now with the sun fading away, mm -hmm. is if he has Heat Wave, is it going to be enough to get the Incineroar? Probably not. So the Incineroar going to be potentially able to kind of lock this one up and that combined with the grassy glide probably just going to be enough and, and Charizard just needed that little bit of extra support I think here to, to help Ben try and close this one out for him. Yeah, very true. The Incineroar's just got that little too many HP points here. Hurricane, however, finds its mark down onto the Incineroar. We'll be able to pick up a KO against it with Charizard being in such vulnerable position here. Something like a Woodhammer coming down into the Charizard might be enough to pick up the KO, and it is indeed that grassy terrain boosting up the grass terrain moves. You know, always beneficial. And it looks like Wolf Glick will be taking game two and the set here at round three. Yeah, um, amazingly well played set by Wolf and, you know, kind of a I don't mean to say this, but expect nothing less from Wolf. Mm -hmm. He is, you know, such a phenomenal player. Made it very difficult for Ben to, yes. um, 